Hi again then guys, and so the new update has of course dropped today, and as I said I'll be covering details, features, reviews, tunes, rivals matches for all of the vehicles involved in the pack, and as usual we're kicking that off first of all with my overview, my initial thoughts, uh, the details of the cars, what do they feel like, how do they compare to each other, all that kind of stuff, the kind of prices that you're looking at, how they compare to our personal predictions, do the cars feel accurate, where do they fall in terms of of categorization, new races, new updates to stuff like physics, for instance. Now, to make a small note initially, as far as those updates to stuff like physics go, because I haven't fully checked out, you know, has this car changed the sound, or does the formula car feel slightly different now, and all of that stuff, which the community will find out for itself within the next few days. But one thing that did immediately jump out to me, and I'm not sure if this is just me or everyone, but I did notice that the updates seem to re set my camera settings in terms of both cockpit mode and chase cam where it was reset to the rigid mode where it followed the car exactly which I'm not a fan of so I had to change that up a little bit make it a little bit more loose kind of Forza style well not just Forza but a lot of other games so I don't know if that was just me as I said but as far as the content itself we'll kick off first of all with Catalonia a controversial pick for the track not that anyone specifically hates the track it's more just like a Eh, you know, I'm not a fan of Catalonia, I don't really care kind of mentality. Which, actually on this occasion, I can fully understand. I'm not a huge Catalonia fan, I said that in the days and weeks coming up to this update, and when it is, or when it has finally dropped in the game, I was looking forward to seeing how it would compare to my experience with that track in the world of Forza, for instance, with the Mosla, with a NASCAR that I would drive around there every so often, sometimes use it as a drift track, I would say that I like it more in GT Sport than I used to on Forza, but this is one of those occasions where the track feels and looks very similar. Sometimes the track changes a lot. For me, Fuji, for instance, feels very different and looks very different to how it used to in the Gran Turismo franchise. The road doesn't seem as huge, the track itself doesn't seem quite as big in a weird sort of way. Catalonia, though, feels, for those who haven't played Forza, very similar. So if you don't like it on Gran Turismo Sport, chances are you probably wouldn't on Forza either, and vice versa, if you were a fan, I think you probably still will be, because unlike on Forza, we can now change the time of day, of course, which is pretty cool. Now, as far as sticking on the topic of tracks for just a moment more, we have had another update, which I'll probably include on screen in this video, to the track experience section, as we've come to expect, because of course with each new update we get a new track but then we tend to get the circuit experience from whatever the last update was so of course for this time they've added four experience sectors for Fuji which I haven't completed just yet but doubtless they're a little bit of extra cash they're not usually particularly difficult either so that's cool as well as far as career mode we've got some new races in there I don't tend to go super into that again the community finds that kind of stuff out for yourselves what then about the cars well, for me, easily the biggest standout of the pack is the Super GTs. And I will say the GTR in particular feels fantastic. The cornering is insanely good. I think I actually like it more than the newer GTR, to be honest. Also, of course, a Super GT car. They do fall into Group 2, for those who are wondering. They cost 800,000 credits each, which is an interesting middle ground between what they used to be and what they were more recently in Gran Turismo 6. For instance, like the, the SO Supra and the R34 Super GT cars used to be about 750 grand back in the, say, Gran Turismo 4 days. Then more recently in GT6, they were about, I believe, 950,000 for stuff like the Yellow Hat Supra or the, the Motul GTR or the NSX, that kind of stuff. So they're in between, they're 800,000 now, which makes sense. That's, of course, the existing price. The Lexus feels good. It feels very beefy, very meaty. The NSX, I would say, easily sounds the best of the three. So if you are a fan of that, you're going to love it. The handling is very good at high speeds. It still has that slight aspect that I'm not a fan of where... It feels like it's steering from the middle of the car, if you will, and I don't mean in a regular mid-engine kind of way, I mean it feels like the front wheels are actually farther back, almost like driving a forklift in a weird kind of way, but with a bit of tuning, that's not really an issue. For me, the GTR is definitely the best. It's fantastic through corners. Surprise, surprise. As far as some of the others, which could be maybe really good or not so good, like the Jag E-Type, for me, 
I mean, surprise, surprise again, I'm not a fan of the E-Type. I know, sacrilegious for a British person to not love the E-Type Jag. I've never been a huge fan of it, though. I do believe that this car coming to the game solidifies even further my prediction that a Mercedes Gullwing is going to return. I think that that's almost definite, because it's that exact kind of icon. I do think they'll bring back the 300 SL, but as far as the E-Type goes, it surprised me in terms of price, because it's a lot more than it was in the past. I can't re recall what it was before, but I think it was something like 80 or 90,000. Now it's 170. 170,000 is quite a bit. The handling is probably the most challenging of the pack. The 288 GTO Ferrari is, as you'd expect, a fairly brutal old-school car, especially given that it was bred in part for rally to begin with. The Jaguar, though, feels very authentic, which in other words means it feels bad, because it should feel bad. It's a very long but relatively narrow classic with skinny tyres and prim primitive technology by today's standards. So it feels about as good as you'd expect an E-Type Jaguar to feel, or how good it should feel. So overall, I think I have more interest in the Jaguar than I would have before in the franchise. It's nice to have an interior, for instance, better graphics. It was, of course, not a premium car in any of the other games. In terms of two of the most exciting cars, I would say, one of which you've already seen on Catalonia, the Zonda R, and my personal favourite brand returning to the game, Maserati with the Gran Turismo S. Pricing-wise, they're about what I expected, about 170 grand for the Maserati, about 1.8 million for the Zonda, or exactly 1.8, pretty much what I was assuming they would be. Unfortunately, the Zonda R is in Group X, as many of you know by this point. I was hoping very much so that it would be N700, because it is in the lower end of the 700 horsepower region, cars tend to jump up to N800 if you have, say, 745 or 746-ish horsepower. So the Zonda would have been around the same category or class, you could say, as the Vulcan. And since the Vulcan is an N-class car, to me it's completely unfair that the Zonda isn't. And I know, yes, later on the Vulcan became road legal, blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. It was not originally the Zonda R is a perfect rival for it, and unfortunately they destroyed that rivalry because it's in Group X, making it a cool return for Pagani, but an utterly useless one from a racing point of view. So, mixed thoughts on that one. Being able to paint the Zonda R is pretty cool though. As far as the sound, I know some of you guys are mixed on that, some like the sound, some don't. It doesn't scream like you'd expect it to, but I mean... Shocker, Gran Turismo doesn't have car sounds that sound as good as you want them to. Are you really surprised by this point? Of course it doesn't, they never do. But it does sound... it sounds Zonda R enough, let's say. And the fact that it's in Group X makes me actually care less than I would have were it in N700, because I would be using it a lot more and noticing the sound a lot more. But as far as the Maserati goes, way better. Way more useful. N400 means that it's going to get a lot more use than it used to, that's for sure, in the franchise. It used to be one of those cars like the Alfa Romeo 8C, which is another car I predict will return. Just didn't get that much use from the majority of players. It was quick, but not really quick enough. And if stuff like the Jaguar F-Type and the Aston Martin Vantage or anything to go by, they're pretty much guaranteed to get more use now, thanks to the N-Classes. They're just they feel more useful going up against those kind of rivals. The Maserati feels good, it's a big heavy car anyway, and you can definitely notice that. You can tune it up to around 700 horsepower, which is what the one that I'm using in this portion of the video, or around this portion, has. So you can go over 200 miles per hour, even with the standard gearbox. It sounds good, it's beefy. As I said, it's my favourite brand, so I love having it back. More Maseratis in the future of the franchise would be very nice, but it's not probably a priority brand, I don't think, for Polyphony, so we'll see how that goes. And as far as the other ones, the Subaru is great. You can tune it up to well over 500 horsepower. The handling uh, actually has an interesting feature which I'm yet to check if it can be done or not on other cars. I certainly hope that they've updated this, but I'm not sure. You can change the torque distribution. It's one of the very few cars that I've seen so far, at least, that you can actually change it. So you can have like a 30-70 split on the diff. That's very cool, and a lot of us have wanted that for a long time. Now, as I said, I have not double-checked any of the other cars to see if that's carried over. I hope it has, but I don't know. So, in terms of performance, it's exactly what you want it to be. For the first time, it's got the detailed interior. For the first time, it's a premium. So any Subaru fan is going to love that, no doubt. 
and yeah, the the 22B is probably my favourite version of the Impreza as a non-Impreza fan, so it's probably the one I would have picked actually to come to the game. So pretty cool, I think you will be happy with that one if you are looking forward to it, it will be everything you expect it to be. In terms of the Mini, well, as I said before, my least anticipated, perhaps though one of the best handling cars of the pack, maybe even second best to the GTR for me in terms of how good it feels to drive. Super easy, you can detune it to N100, and I've got a feeling it might actually be a pretty good N100 car, given that Minis are kind of known for being really good, working with a relatively small amount of power. So that was pretty cool. It's an interesting choice, kind of a strange choice to go for that particular Mini, but an interesting one. It feels better than I expected, which happens quite a bit with these kind of, well, lackluster cars, let's say. And as far as the Ferrari, which of course was my only incorrect prediction from the pack, I thought it was the Lancia 037 Stradale for the most part, I've never been a huge fan of this Ferrari anyway. I know it seems like I say that about a lot of cars, but there are tons of cars that I love, but there are also just tons that I'm not a fan of. My dream car, after all, is a Ferrari. I just happen to not like the GTO so much. I like its concept. I think it would be even cooler if it was an all-wheel drive Group B monster. That's not the way it panned out, of course, but it handles in the way that you'd want something like this to handle. In terms of pricing, I can't recall at the moment what it was in GT6. I think it might have been something like a million credits, maybe more, but I think it was a million. It's 1.85, so it's actually the most expensive car of the pack, 50 grand more than the Zonda R. It is an N category vehicle though, so it's actually more useful <laughs> than the Zonda R is which says a lot, but if you are a Ferrari fan, again, if you're a, fr a fan of old school, like retro supercars, doubtless you'll enjoy that one. It makes an interesting rival for stuff like the Diablo GT or the McLaren F1, but not really a direct rival. Maybe more so for the F40 in a spiritual sense, but I think it would be a good rival if we had like an older Porsche 911 or maybe even a 959, something like that, of course, also with the Rally DNA, but we'll have to see how that goes in the game. Overall, as far as this update goes, I think that it's a good selection of cars. I think it's a very interesting choice of track, not one that I would have actually highly expected Polyphony to go for. So I think that that is pretty cool. It wasn't a, a predictable choice. And although I'm not a huge Catalonia fan, I do like that they've added it because it is new. And all of us all the time say about, oh, we want new content, not recycled content. But then when we get this original content, we say, well, that isn't the original content that I wanted. I wanted this original content. Well, make your mind up. This is original content. I don't love the track, but I still love that it's a new original track. And to me, that's cool. I'll definitely be using the circuit more than I ever have on Forza. And as far as the cars, there are some I'm disappointed with, the Zonda in particular due to its class. The others, I think, are really good across the board. The E-Type's okay, the Ferrari's okay, but I would say that easily the standout is having more Super GT cars because they feel great and you are going to love them if you are a Super GT fan. But overall, that's it for my initial thoughts. As I said before yesterday, in fact, be sure to stick around here on the channel. I'd recommend turning on notifications because, of course, YouTube is an absolute mess in terms of telling people when videos are actually uploaded. So I'm going to be doing tunes and reviews of all of the individual cars starting tomorrow. So stick around for that. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.